Hi everyone, Dave here again. Um, we've got, we're really fortunate to have Caroline speaking to us today. And I've been watching it through as I've been putting things together. And it's beautiful and I'm sure it's going to inspire you. So I'm looking forward to that. Don't forget to order your copy of our book. And if you can't afford it, go to the page on our website where people are donating copies that you can have for free and send us a request for a free copy. In the meantime, make yourself comfortable, pause the video if you need to, do what you need to be, make yourself comfortable and prayerful, come back and press play. Enjoy the service. Lord of all, we thank you that you are the God that comes to us, the God that reveals himself to us, the God who has sent us his son to live among us to share our experiences. Throughout Advent, we have faithfully followed your star and it brought us to his birth in Bethlehem. But as the year turns, we do not know where it will lead and what it may bring us. We thank you that you have sent us the Christ child not a distant God, but one who was prepared to make himself as vulnerable as us, born in a stable. Here at the beginning of the year we shelter with you, safe from the ice and snow. Not sure of where following you will take us, but trusting you to guide us through this winter and to keep us safe from all that the world can hurl at us. Fill us with hope and anticipation with the birth of the Christ child and the dawn of a new year. Winter is upon us and our fears are many. Hear our cry, Lord, come to us, reside in us and rescue us. Keep us safe through these dark days. Grant us that hope, grant us your peace, grant us your joy. We gather here online as those who have hungered and thirsted for your justice and peace as those who have strived to be treated as equal, as those who have longed to be included. We have prayed, we have hoped and we have waited. We have dared to dream but we are tired, Lord. It is hard to stay optimistic, to keep bitterness at bay and not to be overwhelmed by man's inhumanity to man. It is hard to simply carry on. We huddle together across the web, looking for your outstretched hand, for your light during these dark days. We need to feel the warmth and light of your love. We beg you to draw near and to grant us your peace. We thank you for the hope that is in the gift of the Christ child. There is power in the union we have found together, this pilgrim band of outsiders, misfits and dreamers the brave men and women who join us in the struggle for equality and inclusion. This diverse band of differing races, genders, sexuality and abilities. Keep us safe, Lord, in this space as we head into such an uncertain time. We are all made in many different ways, a diverse collection of your children drawing alongside one another to share fellowship with each other and to worship you. Reassure us that all are welcome here, all are accepted here, all are allied here and all different yet all united. We rejoice at the opportunity to celebrate the many ways we reflect different aspects of you our God and we embrace the message of inclusion woven throughout the old gospel and we pray that that vision becomes clearer and is embraced by your whole church. Amen. Welcome the tired, the exhausted, the worn out, the grieving. Welcome the scared ones, the frightened and the nervous ones. The ones whose trust has been betrayed. The ones who have not known what it feels like to feel safe. 
The lost and the sad ones. The penniless and the poor ones. The outcast and the shunned ones. The ones who say, I don't fit in. The shut out. The locked out ones. Those who are unable to scale the wall. The ones that some churches have forgotten. The ones that some churches would rather not look at. The ones that some churches have abused and mistreated and are now too ashamed to acknowledge. Welcome again to this sacred place. This holy ground, as real to us as some church buildings. Our home is here on YouTube, on Twitter and on our website. Online is where we live and have our being. These are all places of welcome, open to all, and we do mean all. And though we are in many ways estranged from some churches, we thank you, Lord, for those on the inside who support us, who join with us each week, who continue to intercede for us and to carry our cause forward within the church week in, week out. The ones who recognise our need and who bravely support us. Stay for as little or as long as you'd like. Be as involved or not as you feel comfortable being. Many of us that gather here were unable to access physical church even before the pandemic. And here we've been made welcome and found a home. This is our space. Come, join us. We dedicate this space to those who have been excluded for loving someone in a way that has been judged wrongly to those whose personhood has been challenged wrongly, to those who have been made to feel unworthy because of the colour of their skin or the nature of their disability. Father, take this place and those who have gathered here and make this a place of hope, of encouragement, a place of refuge and peace. Amen. And for those who are just too tired, we say, welcome. For those who are in need of rest, we say, welcome. For those who feel they've reached the end of their rope, we say, welcome. For those who are new here, we say, welcome. For those who are confident of their place, we say, welcome. For those who are unsure if we will really include everyone, we say, welcome. For those who have been hurt by bad theology and harmful pastoral practices, we say, welcome. For those who never thought that they would find an inclusive faith environment, we say to you, welcome. To those who join us at a later date and a later time, you are welcome. And above all, Jesus, we welcome you into our presence. This is your temple, Lord. And although there are no walls, the web is where we gather, as real to us as any building. Computers, phones and tablets are our prayer books. Our prayers float in the ether like incense across the sanctuary. And fellowship comes in so many forms. Ours is here, online, together. Lord Jesus, you reveal yourself to us as true God and true man. You dwell among us, call us to conversion and give us healing. With hope, we turn to you with our needs. 
We pray for all Christians around the world. God our Father, strengthen us as we contemplate your revelation through the coming of your Son, Jesus. Give us the joy and peace that only come from you and make us bearers of the gospel. For all those who are sick, alone and on the margins, we pray especially for prisoners, for the forgotten, and for those who undertake the perilous travels to a new country where to seek refuge. Lord Jesus, you who are revealed in those brothers and sisters, teach us to love and serve them. We continue to pray for peace. Lord God, you promise us a new earth where reconciliation and justice will meet. We entrust to your mercy the conflict in Ukraine and those forgotten conflicts in areas of the world where injustice brings unrest and pain to many. God our Father, protect and help all families and children, that through their mutual love they may embody your love for humanity. In this time, when many are worried about finances, about job stability, and about the future, we ask you, Lord, that you continue to reveal yourself to us and to them in the love, help and closeness of their brothers and sisters. God our Father, through your Son Jesus, you are present to us and you are your li our light. Hear our prayers, which we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's Gospel reading is from the book of John, chapter 1, verses 29 to 42. The next day, John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I meant when I said, A man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. I myself did not know him. But the reason I came baptising with water was that he may be revealed to Israel. Then John gave this testimony. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. And I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptise with water told me. The man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is the one who who will baptise with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and I testify that this is God's chosen one. The next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning around, Jesus saw them following and asked, What do you want? They said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Come, he replied, and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying, and they spent that day with him. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, We have found the Messiah, that is, the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which, when translated, is Peter.
I've been reflecting this epiphany about the revelation that God gives us of himself. And what struck me afresh is two things, really. The first thing is who God is. All too often we hide who we are, don't we? But God in every action reveals who he is. And the second thing is that often, in fact, almost always, those experiences for the people in the Bible are really full-on sensory experiences. God puts himself within human reach, within the scope of our senses. Now, I live in a neurodiverse household, and one of the quirks of that is that we have some of our senses dialed up all the way to 11, and we have other senses slightly more dulled. So, for example, we have one member of our household who has hearing so acute that she can hear the slight whine a light bulb makes when it's been turned on. And it can make it sometimes a little bit difficult to live with one another. We feel as though we're missing a layer of skin. And yet at the same time, our senses are profoundly important to us. I want to just do a little bit of skipping through scripture and look at some of the ways in which God reveals who God is and ties that to a sensory experience in such a way that the person who has that experience is going to remember, it's going to go deep. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was formless and dark, and the Spirit of God hovered over the waters, and God said, let there be light. And the light is part of God's creative love. God reveals himself by creating, by giving, by outpouring in life and in light. If we hop into the Gospels, we have John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and he was with God in the beginning, and all things were made through him. And then we have the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. The glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. God's character revealed and that marvellous image of light and word, things we can see and hear and experience. And then I actually love the, uh, the corresponding bit in 1 John 1, um, where we read, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched. This we proclaim concerning the word of life. And then a little bit later on, God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. The revelation of God is absolutely consistent through scripture. There's one more bit I cannot resist. It's a beautiful piece of scripture that occurs in Exodus, Exodus 33 and 34. And it's a moment between God and Moses. Now, What's basically happened is that uh, God has freed his people from Pharaoh. They've done the crossing of the Red Sea. They're walking through the wilderness. It's not going very well. The people are complaining and they're grumbling and they're moaning despite the fire and the, and the cloud and the miracles. They're still not getting it. And Moses is up the mountain and he's talking with God and he's having this kind of moment with God. They have this wonderful back and forth sort of relationship. And Moses gives God an ultimatum. If you don't go with us, we're not budging from here because if you're not with us what else will distinguish us from all the other peoples on the face of the earth what will make us different if you're not with us and then he goes on and he says i want to see you now this is moses asking for emmanuel asking for god with us god in the midst of them it's not a, a new testament concept emmanuel it's an old testament concept and God says, Moses, you cannot see my face. Your human brain will just explode. You can't cope with it. But you can see my back and I'll proclaim my name to you. And in Bible's terms, a person's name, their reputation, their character, they're all one thing. So when God is saying, I'll tell you my name, he's saying, I'll tell you who I am. And so he takes Moses, he hides him in a cleft in the rock and he goes past and then Moses is allowed to see God's back and God proclaims his name. And this is what God says about himself. The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, 
maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion and sin. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. It's an amazing character, the character of God. And we only ever see God's back. We know God by God's action in the world, by God's impact on the world, by God's footsteps throughout scripture and throughout our lives. And one day we'll come face to face, but not yet. And in Christ, we have the image, we're told, of the invisible God. Jesus' life on earth, his walking around through earth, Emmanuel, God with us, God within our grasp, shows us that character of God and gives people full-on sensory encounters with God that they can hold on to and remember and retell. And so we have the Magi, their special interests, stargazing, and they get fixated on this one star that's brighter than all the others, and they do this great long epic journey. And at the end of it, they've learned some things about the one that they're visiting. And you can tell this by the gifts they give. Gold, beautiful, shiny, gorgeous gold, gift for a king. Incense, that beautiful fragrance of temple worship. God really made the temple a feast for the senses. And myrrh, which is a kind of shadowy, bittersweet sort of gift, acknowledging that there's going to be suffering because it's used as an ointment and an antiseptic and an anaesthetic and an anointing for the dead. So when God puts himself within human grasp, there's risk involved and pain. Then we jump a little bit forward to Jesus' presentation in the temple, that Sunday where we look at Jesus' presentation in the temple, which actually chronologically happened before the wise men appeared. But Jesus is presented when he's a tiny baby and Simeon gets his hands on him and with the fragrance of the sacrifice still in their nostrils, Simeon speaks words over this child and he says, Lord, now let your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation. Wow. I mean, there's faith, isn't it? To look at a baby and see salvation. But yet again, another person who's got their hands on God and presumably heard the story. We have that moment where Jesus is revealed in his baptism. John, his cousin, literally he's got his hands on God himself. He's plunging him under the water. The dove descends. The voice of God speaks. This is my son. And then we have the wine at the wedding in Cana. And again, an amazing kind of sensory miracle where Jesus takes these enormous stone jars of water that he has the servants lugging around and he transforms it into wine. And not only wine, but the best wine, the most glorious, wonderful tasting wine that's the best that's been brought out. Oh, taste and see, says the Bible. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Now we are called upon in our Christian lives to seek out that revelation of God. We may not hear voices from heaven. We may not be tripping over miracles every day. But God has made himself known to us. And each of us might have a particular way that God speaks to us. A number of characters in the Bible have very powerful sensory experiences using only perhaps one or two of their senses. Thomas comes to faith in the resurrection by touching the risen Christ. Peter sees him from the boat and dives into the water. Some of the other disciples eat a meal Jesus has cooked. And wow, this really is real. I'm sitting here eating this fish. Mary believes in the resurrection because she hears Jesus' voice speak her name. And that's how she knows him. Whether we have all five senses fully functioning or whether we have a sensory lack, the temptation always as human beings is to focus on what we don't have when it comes to the revelation of God rather than what we do. Each of those characters has an experience that is full and entire and complete in itself. God meets them where they are in the sense they most need to be met through. And there are some really beautiful moments scattered throughout Scripture, Old and New Testament. I encourage you to seek them out and to explore them. It is also worth reflecting on the fact that often in Scripture, characters find God 
in ways and forms they do not expect. The Magi did not expect a child in a humble home. They expected a king in a palace. Simeon probably wasn't expecting a baby when he thought about the Messiah. I imagine that John got a bit of a jolt of shock having to look at his own cousin in a whole new light as God's son. And those guests at the wedding in Cana who Jesus would have known and Jesus' own mother watching him do that miracle would have seen and perceived him in a different way. We must be prepared to find God in places and amongst people where we might not perhaps expect him. So I encourage you to open not only your senses, but also your hearts and make room for an epiphany, a revelation of who God is as God moves through the world. Amen. Jesus as we reflect on what it is to be equals, to feel included. Help us to create a space where people feel able to put their pack down and sit for a while, a place where they can enjoy, enjoy every sandwich. For a service we are able to attend easily, we thank you. For people who understand, we thank you. For a place that even the darkness cannot penetrate, we thank you. For those who have the courage to stand up for the marginalised, no matter what the cost, we thank you. God of light, a light that breaks through the darkness, a light that penetrates all hidden corners, a light that came to us through a little child born in Bethlehem, we have followed your star and it has brought us here to this sacred place, alone yet together. May we continue to search diligently for him each day so that we may offer our lives to you in joy and thanksgiving. Teach us a new song, Lord, a song for those who go unsung. Praise for the ones who do our dirty work, the pushers of chairs, the wipers of bums, the makers of tea, the givers of meds. Teach us that new song, Lord, that lets them know that they are loved. They're ones who put their own dreams on hold, Lord, that give until they are spent and then get up again tomorrow and do it all again. The ones that go unnoticed, Lord, quietly meeting our needs, yet keep us rolling along. Teach us to say thank you, Lord, for every ounce of care. Teach us to say thank you to the ones who are although isolated and alone, dedicate their time to interceding for others, the ones who we don't know yet whose prayer sustains us. Teach us more each day about how to truly include everyone, to mean it when we say it, and to reflect it in both our online and written presence. God, now let us bring before you those we know of in need of you at this time. In a moment of silence, we hold them before you and ask your blessing on their lives. Those who cannot see, he walks with as guide. He whispers softly to those who cannot hear. He soothes those minds who are troubled. He rides with those who cannot walk. He sees the pain of those who cannot be seen and brings insight to those who appear not to understand. God of hope, bring us love that dwells between us. God of hope, who brought peace into this world, be the peace that dwells between us. God of hope, who brought joy into the world, be the joy that dwells between us. And there we are, my friends. That's the end of our service. Hopefully you've found a place of peace here, a place of sanctuary, a place where you can just rest, recharge and be loved for who you are in the arms of our most loving Father. Now, let us come together and invite the Lord to sit with us as we receive our final blessing. God is love and those who live in love live in God and God in them. 
Be on your guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. Be strong. Do everything in love. May the love of our Lord go with you. May the hope of the Spirit walk alongside you. And may the peace of our Lord God reign upon your lives. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst us all, always. Amen. Long, my Lord. Alleluia, sweet Lord. 